Hey everyone, it's theCUBE live in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay covering ClickWorld 2023. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We've had some great conversations. Today is day one, yesterday was partner day, today's day one. Tomorrow is a day you will not want to miss. Lots of show and tell going to happen. We have a CUBE OG with us. James Fisher is back <laughs> with theCUBE <laughs> after a, a long time away. The chief product officer at Click. Welcome, James, great to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be here again after all that time. Yeah, yes. right. Yes. Wow. So Early days. You, you've been with Click for, you said, nearly nine years. You've seen a lot of evolution. Our first guest this morning was Mike Capone, your CEO yeah. with um, Crawford Del Pratt from IDC, and he was talking about just all, so much change and innovation and growth in the last five years he's been here. You've seen a tremendous evolution of the Click platform. Talk to us about what that journey's been like. Yeah, well, I'm going to actually talk a little bit about that tomorrow in the, in the keynote, but uh, before we get to that, I, I think for me, I joined uh, in 2014, and Click was just at the point where we were pivoting our strategy away from uh, Click View and purely guided analytics built by a few and consumed by the many, to really opening up the aperture of the different types of analytic capabilities that were needed. Uh, broadening that out into self-service, which of course means lots of many different things to many different people, but it's all about reaching more and more users in our customer base. And as we started to do that, that it sort of became like a snowball, you know, rolling down the hill. It gathered more and more momentum. And as it, that happened, we've gathered more and more capabilities to the platform as well. We've enriched the visualization framework. We've changed the paradigm of analytics, not just from um, diagnostic and descriptive, but now looking at predictive and prescriptive analytics, bringing in AI, auto ML, augmenting the way people ask questions. So the, the analytic capability is built out. And as we've done that, the value of the pipeline has become more and more exciting as well. We're starting to bridge the gap between data engineers, data consumers with the catalog. And then recognizing that you know, we've had so many conversations around the amount of data that's available. I think that's probably one of the very first conversations that Dave, you and I ever yeah. had on the, on the, right. on the cube here. Uh, but ultimately, what that's about now is recognizing that we need to help customers pull all of that together, create a data fabric, and the platform's just evolved around all of that. So you talk about data fabric. We've talked a little bit about data fabric, data met. What, what does that mean, data fabric, to you? So, there, I think there are lots of conversations and discussions around is it a data fabric, is it a data mesh, how does one relate to the other uh, or not? For me, it's just quite simple. It's about making sure you've got all of the assets you need to bring all of the data that you need to answer a question. Think of it as like treating data as a product, which is a term that I'm increasingly hearing from executives uh, in organizations all around the world. You create that fabric, bring all the data you need to answer business questions, and then you focus on usability and the consumption of that. Yeah, I think data as a product is a powerful concept. The reason I ask is because we still have, the, if you think about the data life cycle, the data pipeline, we still have these very hyper-specialized individuals, data, the quality engineer, the, the analyst, the data scientist, and there's been some definitely movement on help, help, helping them work together, uh, but you talk about democratization all the time, and actually putting data in the hands of the users, that's what I think about when I think of data fabric, data mesh, whatever you want to call it. It's about being able to get the data when I need it as a business user right, right away, that it's accurate, it's trusted, it's governed, it's shareable if I want to share it. Is that where you're headed? Absolutely, I think for us, and certainly for me, my responsibility of thinking about our product vision, our roadmap, and our strategy, um, being able to articulate an end-to-end -end value proposition and tell that to someone that cares about it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, line of business executives, CROs, heads of uh, the supply chain function, they're focused on solving real business problems, and we need to make sure they have all of the component parts to do that. But, in order to get the right pieces in the right place, we need to still focus on the people that are using our products, that are building those data pipeline. So we need to give those capabilities that a data engineer needs. We need to give those capabilities that a citizen data scientist, I don't really like that term, that they need, or the analyst, or the operational worker, or the knowledge worker. So we can't lose focus of those individual parts as we think about the whole. Yeah, data scientists don't like that term either, but it's interesting where you've come from as a company, because you came from the world of Viz, and sort of worked into the data integration piece, it's, I don't know, I always thought that was the harder part, you know, the back end, but you've done it with a lot of M&A. So my question to you as the, the head of product, how have you created that 
singular customer experience. Um, is it a secret sauce that you have in terms of the types of companies that you have? A lot of companies, take like a ServiceNow. ServiceNow, you know, historically, wouldn't buy a company unless they were sort of built in that ServiceNow platform as a fit right in nicely. You've seen so many horror stories of, of, of companies buying M&A for growth, nothing sort of fit together, and then you know, the company ends up getting, getting bought, right? And it's, EMC, classic example, I mean that's hardware, but still. You've seen it in the software as well. Very challenging problem. How have you been able to succeed in that challenge? So if you, are you talking about sort of how we think about solving customer problems and addressing those, bringing those components Integ together? Integration from your product standpoint. Yeah. So uh, it, I think it all focuses on what, what do we need to solve? What is the problem? That's the heart of the product management life cycle, right? What problem are you trying to solve is the first question you absolutely have to ask. And once you know the answer to that, then you can start to build out the, the solution that sits around it. So we've built a roadmap of, of different capabilities that have come organically and inorganically into the, to the portfolio. We talked about just a few of those in Mike's keynote this morning. But as we do that, we have to think about usability, who the user is, how how we bring it together, uh, take the time to integrate capability rapidly into a singular user experience. What is that flow? So all of those pieces have to come together to make that sort of dichotomy of organic and inorganic innovation work. Is it just easier to do today than when we met like 10 or 12 years ago? It, uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I mean, you make it sound simple, but I mean, like, look at Oracle, they spent, I don't know, a decade plus in building Fusion. Um, it, it, do, do you have a sort of secret sauce there? Do you, did you build, I think is that the organic technology? Or? Yeah, I, I think we've had a singular vision in terms of what mm -hmm. we want to do, and we've, we've sort of uh, held ourselves to that. Um, you know, we operate under the three kind of key, key guiding principles. That we are a cloud company, so we'll deliver cloud first, but not cloud only. Uh, we'll respect our customers' data and the location in which it ever always resides, and we'll protect customers' investments. So every time we approach one of these challenges and we sort of ana analyze it against those criteria, then it guides you, it keeps you structured. And I think um, cutting some of the noise out of things is, is how it becomes a little bit easier. Uh, and the cloud platform certainly helps. That's the fundamental foundation on which we're building all of these services. Uh, and that's how it kind of hangs together. You say the technology's not the hard part unless you make it the hard part, right? A lot of yeah. times companies <laughs> will start with the technology and try to force it in and figure well, it out that, later. That applies to analytics as well, right? Yeah. It's the, the visualization is the easy part. It's the data pipeline that, that fuels that that really creates the value. Talk a little bit about the culture at Click. Obviously, uh, one of the things Mike was talking about this morning is the 30th anniversary of the company, mature business. We talked about, you talk, did a great job of talking about its evolution and your tenure there, but what the, the culture has to be there to support change and growth and pivots. Talk a little bit about that and how that's a facilitator of today's point, all the integration, pun intended, that needs to be done with the strategy of, of growth that you have. Yeah, so I think the, the you only got to look around this incredible venue, right, just to see the passion that's that's yeah. in the room from all of the customers, all the partners, uh, and all of the click folks that are here, right? You know, you cut you cut us and we bleed green. Some of us bleed green with a shade of <laughs> analytics. Some of us bleed green with a, a shade of data integration. Uh, and there, that's the real kind of foundation of everything that we do, that passion for um, solving problems, uh, but doing that in a way that we support customers. And as long as we keep doing that, uh, then I think the integration challenges, the decisions that we have to make, um, we can't do everything, right? And uh, we have to make decisions, communicate clearly. Uh, that really, for me, sits at the heart of everything that we're doing. So 38,000 plus customers to this day in over 100 countries. Talk a little bit about the customers. I know there's an executive advisory council. We had uh, some of those customers on earlier today. The slide was shown. I think uh, Chris Powell was saying there's about 50 of them. Oh, no, I think that was the Luminary program. In any that was event, the yeah. Okay, but, but in terms of the, the customer involvement in the, the product strategy that you're delivering, talk a little bit about, about what I am imagining is a very symbiotic relationship. Absolutely, and look, that, that's one of the themes of what I'll be talking about tomorrow, right? Customer feedback is at the heart of everything we're doing. Um, it drives over 80% of all of our product deliverables come from customer and indeed partner uh, feedback. Uh, and that is the start of our innovation pipeline. From there, we prioritize, we execute, we deliver, um, but then we monitor. 
we drive adoption, we test that adoption, we get great insight through the cloud platform on how people are using, so we now can create that closed loop cycle, uh, and feedback is valid at every single step of that journey. So there's got to be a good click on click story in there somewhere. I think, well, the, all of our telemetry is in a click application, <laughs> as you can imagine. Yes. So okay, so I get the customer, I mean everybody's customer obsessed these days, right? So, so do you have a secret sauce with customer obsession, right? I mean, I don't know one company that doesn't say we start with the customer, but, but when you really peel the onion, you say, okay, this one does. You can kind of, you know what I'm saying, James, you can see the ones that, that say it and the ones that you know, walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So what is it about Click that you can tell me that you know, gives you like the passion and the confidence that you guys actually do, are able to take that customer feedback, and it's really important, decode it. Yeah. It's like Steve Jobs says, ask the customer what they want, they're, gonna, they're not going to tell you the, the iPhone. Yeah. Right? So there's, a, there's an art there as well. I mean, you can set up customer advisory boards and you can look at the data, so how have you guys been able to be successful at that? Uh, I think it's just in the DNA, right? You asked for the secret sauce, I think it's the DNA, and it goes back, go back 30 years to where Click started. It started with some innovative guys in Tetra Pak trying to solve some uh, business problems. And it was all built around the idea of how do we take the power of the, the human Right, the ability, the human intuition, the ability to ask a question, and marry that with the power of the database, with the, the machine. Um, and it was a very customer-centric sort of innovation uh, that, that started 30 years ago. And it went from that customer to the next customer, which was AstraZeneca. And then it went to the next customer, and then you get to 38,000 uh, customers. And I think that's just been ingrained in everything that we've done and everything that we've uh, we've spoken about. I think that's why that we, on all of our badges for this event, it says clickies. <laughs> I like that, clickies. <laughs> all right, so, so give us a few nuggets tomorrow. We know we, we want to be in, in the keynote tomorrow. A lot of, of, of hands-on, a lot of probably great news. What are some of the teasers you can give to our audience so that they are there online or in person tomorrow morning? Well, yeah, no, uh, I, I want to see everybody there, bright and breezy tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 look, the session tomorrow, I think, is going to really focus in on that evolution of the platform, uh, why customer feedback is so important, the role it, it plays, how we think about uh, that, uh, of course, you know everything that's happening right now around the, the potential of the future talent acquisition is is really exciting. Um, so we'll sort of articulate a little bit about how we're thinking about that, um, but then very quickly get into the to the value that we're trying to drive in our data integration portfolio uh, and in the analytics portfolio. So we'll show uh, how we think Click and Talent can work together, even today as as partners as they are at, uh, at this event. Uh, and then I think we've got some really interesting demo coming in the analytics section, a little bit around generative uh, uh, AI, and just sort of what the art of the possible uh, out of the possible is, and for me, you know, that's the that's the big menu you can read then for the rest of the afternoon to get into all of these other sessions and stuff that's happening tomorrow. I mean, it's impossible to really predict what foundation models and what the potential can be, other than, wow, this is has a lot of potential. Are there specific use cases that you've you've honed in on that you're pretty confident that's something that you can you can double down on, or do you not know yet? Well, the, the, the use case question is always an interesting one I get when, when I get asked it, because it's a bit of a how long is a, is a piece of string um, uh, answer. I think, as we think about data integration, from a click perspective, we've always focused on solving problems around data movement, change data capture and streaming, data warehouse modernization, data lake creation. Uh, as we think about how we're going to broaden our portfolio, we go from three to maybe seven use cases that, that really expand out into a much broader uh, set of capabilities. On the analytics side though, it's, it's almost what you can imagine. I mean, we've defined 23 different use cases by line of business for our auto ML capabilities. Whether that's customer churn analysis, whether that's uh, you know, sales pipeline forecasting uh, accuracy. Um, so there are untold numbers of use cases and it's understanding those use cases by talking to customers at events like this that allows us to hone some of the features and functions we deliver in the roadmap. Yeah, and data's so complicated. I think there's, there's got to be so many ways to really simplify that, that AI can support. Well, I'm yep. excited to see that. 
So in our final minute here, I want you to uh, give us a, a, your favorite customer story example that you think really articulates the evolution that you started the segment off by talking about uh, of the journey and click's been on. What yeah. comes to mind? Yeah, well, it's a, an, another little teaser for the keynote tomorrow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to welcome one of the global award winners on stage. I won't tell you which one it, it, it is, uh, but one of those global award winners who uh, the nature of their business has just completely transformed. Um, it's a, a business that where it's, it's foundation in its heart. You'd never imagine that data would ever have played a, a, a role. And now it's intrinsic. It's pervasive in every single thing uh, that they do. And they've been on that same journey with click view and guided uh, dashboards. They've gone into that methodology around service. They've built uh, a data pipeline. And now they're in the process of moving into the cloud and embracing everything that that brings, uh, ultimately not driven by cost of ownership, uh, but actually driven by the ability to consume all of these new capabilities that are available, seamlessly accessible in the, uh, in the cloud platform. So that's a story, I'm not trying to give too much away that I think tomorrow uh, really translates from data into real business value. Well, and what you just articulated very briefly is clearly a business that has done a major transformation. No doubt, no wonder that they are a transformation award winner. James, thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE, giving us some teasers and some ostensible reasons we need to be there tomorrow. We thank you so much for sharing some of those insights and the evolution journey and kind of what's next, we appreciate it. Excellent, glad to be here. Yeah, our pleasure. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE live from Click World 2023 from Las Vegas. Stick around, Stuart Bond joins us next from IDC. We'll see you soon.